Welcome to the Basic Bee Podcast, a show for the wannabe SEO savvy service providers among us, for the coaches and consultants who dream of becoming known for their storytelling skills, not to mention the solopreneurs who straight up need to master all things social proof to increase sales. After a little reluctantly fully committing to this online world of business, I quickly realized I needed to get people to come to me. I needed to tell them I was here and how I could support them. I dove headfirst into social proof which led me to SEO, which led me to storytelling. And now it gives me great joy to share what I've learned with other business owners so they skip the hard stuff and ease straight into sales. This podcast gives you expert insights, actionable takeaways, and casual convos with some of the online world's best and brightest experts and strategists. I think that's enough of an intro, so here we go. Welcome back to the Basic B Podcast. I'm so excited to have you here and thank you whether you're tuning in on YouTube, on Apple, Spotify, or one of the other, I don't know, dozen or so podcast platforms. I'm really excited to have you here and I'm stoked to have my business and mindset coach here with us today, Selly. We're going to be talking about how to have a grown-ass business, but before we get to it, quick intro so you know a little bit more about Selly. We just found out this morning that we're both nine in numerology, like nine life path, if you know anything about that. In case you've been living under a rock and you haven't been watching my stories or been in my world for the last year, you might not know that Sully is my business coach and mindset coach. She is pretty incredible. She has taken her 25 plus years of expertise in growing, scaling, and selling seven-figure businesses across various industries to help her clients map out a doable effective step-by-step plan for real world business growth using her grown-ass business framework. And she was supposed to be a preacher, but now she helps regulate your business's nervous system. It's fascinating. So hi, Sally. I'll stop talking about you and talk to you now. (laughs) (laughs) Hi. Thank you. That was a good intro. I love this. You love my intros. I'm very here for this. Yeah. And I love your intros, which is a major compliment because I am totally that person who skips over the intros. I am too. So thank you. I so appreciate that. (laughs) Uh, Before I get into all of the questions that I have in mind to ask you, I'm going to ask you the one question I ask all my guests, which is, and there's no wrong answer. It's a trippy one. So which do you believe is the most important for sales? SEO, storytelling, or social proof? For sales themselves, the actual sale, I'm going to say storytelling. I like it. Why? Why do you say that? SEO might attract the people to you and attract the right people to you. But the reason people buy ultimately is because on some level in their emotional scale and in the way they're wired, on some level they connected with you. And I think Mm -hmm. stories are the easiest way for people to connect with you. For sure. I love it. And that's why people buy. So I'm basically talking to myself right now. (laughs) I have 500 million stories because I've been in business for so long and there's so many stories I don't tell. And then I'll tell a story to a client in a call or in a training and they're like, you should totally tell that story (laughs) in your content. That was such a good story. And I'm like, yeah. So that's also, don't do as I do, do as I say. (laughs) Oh my gosh, that has come up so much this week. Because of you, I was introduced to threads. I now hang out on threads a ton. And that was one of the threads that came up was like, do you not do the thing that you tell other people to do in your business? And I'm like, yeah, not me only having one case study on my website. (laughs) Yeah, I know. I mean, I really do have amazing stories. You do. My whole strategy is I focus on my clients first. And so that I I don't Mm -hmm. always get to actually doing as much content and storytelling in my content as I would like. But my clients come first and that's just, that's my focus. I love it. You do have amazing stories. We need to hear more of them. (laughs) Yeah. So, okay, let's just like dive into this. Over the last year that I've known you, I've really seen what you do, who you help, how you help shift and evolve. Can you let us into that journey a little bit? Like, what does that look like? What does that even felt like? Really like your messaging especially has transformed. Yeah. What I do is really intentional. I was just talking to somebody about it this morning. So I am a business strategist through and through. I've been in all types of businesses. I've led businesses. I've been a COO. I've been a founder. I've been a CEO. I've been a business growth coach in different coaching firms. So I'm really a business growth strategist. And I add mindset 
into that. Mm -hmm. But the way that I do it over time, I've gotten really, really clear that mindset is so important and so detrimental to you as a business owner and as a CEO and to you as a human. And mindset doesn't fix a broken business. Mm -hmm. If you have a broken pricing strategy, if you have a broken business model that has you overworked and burnt out, if there are things foundationally in the way you have built the organism of your business, mindset's not going to fix that. Mindset might make you more resilient, for sure. It has made me more resilient. And it doesn't actually fix the strategy and the systems that you've put in place and how you've engineered your business model to support you, to support your life, to support who you want to be in the world. It doesn't actually do that. So the way that I coach is what I do is I make sure that you have really, really strong business foundations first. And I build it out with you. So everyone has a custom business strategy and plan built for their business and their vision and who they are. And what happens on that journey as we build out these key pillars of business and as we really optimize your product market fit and who is your market and how do you speak to them and what is your positioning statements and how do you really talk to them and how are you connecting them and where are you connecting with them? As we optimize your pricing strategy, as we optimize your offer suite, as we optimize your relationship to your finances and cash flow and metrics and numbers and data, as we optimize your marketing channels, like as we do all these key business things and business strategies, what happens when we're doing them is your mindset stuff, which by mindset, I mean your feelings, thoughts, beliefs, past experiences, emotions, your stuff comes up to the surface. It's like I'm building these building blocks or strengthening these building blocks. And through the cracks of those blocks, your mindset stuff comes up. So what we do is we ensure that you have a really strong business model to stand on that supports you and what you want in life. And as your stuff and your story and your narrative and your history comes up, then we can address it. Mm -hmm. But if we're only just addressing the mindset stuff, we never really fix those blocks. And mindset is actually easier to address when you feel confident about the blocks you're standing on. Yeah. So when you're like, okay, great, I feel really good about my pricing strategy. And you're right, those are my offers. And I don't need to add another offer. You're right. And I don't need to add a down ticket. Those are my offers. And I have a sales projections plan. And I have a plan of like when I need to sell how many and for how much. And I feel good about that. There's a sense of ease and confidence and belief in the foundation of your business that now allows you to address that sneaky thought and mindset thing that's maybe getting in your way of being more visible or of getting on a sales call without feeling salesy or of pitching yourself for a podcast or a community or whatever it is, right? When you feel really solid in the business model, you're freed up to now address mm -hmm. some of that other stuff that's going to get in your way because we all have our stuff. I have my stuff. You have your stuff. Um, but what happens is when it gets all intermingled, we get confused about what's actually business strategy and what's actually mindset. So after doing it this way for the past year, I've gotten really clear that there's something really magical about doing it this way. And there's something really transformative that happens quite fast for my mm -hmm. clients. And it's so fun to watch. <laughs> it's so satisfying because when my clients start to go, oh, that's a mindset problem. Yeah. Like, oh, no, I'm just having a business strategy problem. Let me ask you strategically what I should do here. You know, like when they start to know the difference, I'm like, <laughs> so yeah, that's what's involved. I'm much more confident that this approach, there's something really, really real here and something magical because I'm watching my clients transform in front of me and just speak differently. Yeah about their businesses. And so I'm just like, okay, this is really cool. Did anybody see that? Did anybody else? That was really cool. What you just did right in front. Did anybody, 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 just me? Okay. You definitely addressed like one of the things that's unique about you, which I haven't seen anyone combine business coaching and strategy and mindset in the way that you do. And that was one thing that really drew me to you was I was so ready for that. I was so ready for change and so ready for 
that transformation and things to just shift in a really big way. So when you were talking about that, I was like, oh my gosh, that, I need that. (laughs) I need that right now. And it really has been powerful and magical to have that happen in my life and in my own business. But also, like you said, to watch everybody else evolve too. That has been so fun. Even as you're like talking about the different examples, I'm like, oh, that's so-and-so. Oh, that's so-and-so. Oh, I've seen that happen on a mindset call. (laughs) It's just so fun. So I couldn't agree with you more that that is such a unique way to help business owners in not only business, but also life, but definitely the stuff that, like you said, rises to the surface within your business. Yeah. It's just harder to address things when they're all intermingled. Yeah. Right. So if we're able to go, oh, okay, I feel really solid now. I feel on really good footing. Oh, that look at that little belief just came up to the surface. Oh, look at that. Oh, I was warned about this. I knew this would happen. She told me this would happen. Oh, it's happening. (laughs) Just the ability to do that. Mm -hmm. Just even watching this last cohort that went through the accelerator. We don't even really address mindset in the accelerator. We just address the fact that I'm intentionally doing this. I'm intentionally building out your solid business foundations so that you can begin to notice when your mindset is coming up. Just watching those people actually do that and be empowered to do it was just such a beautiful thing, right? Because somebody this weekend was like, I realize now that I feel strong in my numbers and feel strong in the business model and what we're doing, she runs a business with her husband. She's mm-hmm. like, I realize I was feeling guilty and I've been running my business from a guilty place because my old business coach told me I have to feel passionate about my business. Mm-hmm. And I don't feel passionate about my business. Mm-hmm. I feel passionate about my life and my lifestyle and being a mom and having the freedom to be a mom and having the freedom to not be at a nine to five and what my business can do for us. But I've been running on guilt because I was told by somebody that I need to feel passionate in order for it to work and be a successful business. Wow. And I was like, oh, wow. (laughs) I was like, okay. And so now I'm giving you permission to not be passionate about your business. It can also look like that. Your business can be your business. Some people are super passionate about their businesses. I'm super passionate about what I do and what I teach, and I love it, and I'm Mm -hmm. overly passionate about it. (laughs) That doesn't mean all business owners have to be passionate about their business. They can just run a business that's healthy, profitable, and gives them the life they want. No guilt, no shame. Yeah. But how one thing that one person said to her had been marking the journey, and then she had this moment of like, oh, I realize I'm like feeling guilty because I don't feel passionate about this business. So I've been believing that I've been doing it wrong this whole time because of one thing one person said. Yep. I was like, well, isn't that fascinating? (laughs) Permission to not be passionate. You can just run a healthy, profitable business that supports your family and helps you live your life. Amen. Yay. Totally. Glory. Hallelujah. (laughs) So that's what was cool is like watching people build out a solid plan and then see their own stuff coming up and being like, oh, oh my God, I've been feeling guilty about this. And now you're just telling me that I can just do it this way. And I'm like, yep, you can do it that way. Yeah. One thing as you were talking, I was like, this has been a a big thing working with you and just being in your world, being in all the different bubbles and on the calls and everything. And this comes up a lot is like certain coaches, something worked for them. So that's the thing that's going to work for you. And that is something that I would say starkly like stand in opposition to. Just because something works for me doesn't mean it's going to work for you. Just because something works for so-and-so doesn't mean it's going to work for you. Let's dissect what you want. One of the biggest things of working with you is coming up with a vision. I realized I had never been operating from a vision. And I was like, oh my God, what the hell? I have no Mm -hmm. clue where I want to drive this bus, but I've been happily driving the bus. So, you Mm -hmm. know, taking that and figuring out where do I want to go and then like you do, like most coaches do, let's reverse engineer and figure out the steps to get there. But then also let's reverse engineer the steps to get there and address the mindset things and empower you to address the mindset things on your own as they come up. That I would say is the biggest difference of working with you compared to other coaches. Even if other coaches are like, oh, I do business and mindset. Oh, I do this. Oh, I do that. It's like, no, this I have not seen done before. And I've been around the block and I have friends who have been around the block. Yeah. <laughs> Well, thank you. I really appreciate that. Thank you. Because that is what I'm trying to do. 
So that is my intention and I'm glad that it's felt and recognized and seen. So Mm -hmm. yeah, thank you so much. I do think there's a lot of compartmentalizing in the online business coaching industry and space of like, just do this one thing the way I do it. Just copy my one system, copy my one way of getting leads, copy my one way of making content, copy my one way of doing more marketing, copy my one way of whatever. And what that's created is a bunch of little compartmentalized people. And then we're taking all these pieces and we're trying to like create a critter, right? Like we're trying to Mm -hmm. take all these people's pieces and kind of Frankensteining a business and then kind of going, why is this thing not working? Or why is it like (laughs) stressful and overwhelming, right? Because nobody's actually looking at it as a whole and making it this whole beautiful organism that all works together and flows. We've just been taking other people's pieces and strategies and tactics and trying to like piece them together and make them work. And I think that the way you get it to work is by first being really clear about what you want that critter to do. So I'll give you an example. I was just talking about this on a community call earlier this morning. One of my clients said, I'm noticing this person's doing X, Y, Z. She seems to be loving it and it seems to be working for her. Should I do X, Y, Z? And my immediate answer isn't yes or no. My immediate answer is, well, what's in your vision and what's your ultimate goal? Let's go back to your vision and let's get really clear about what you're building in the world. What does your business do? And what is your vision for your business? Because what she's doing might work for you. I already knew the answer because I know both, both of them are my clients. I know everyone's visions. I read everyone's visions. I know exactly what everyone's trying to build because my job is a guide. I'm just trying to make sure that you stay on your path, that you stay going towards your vision. That's my job is like, let me make sure I'm building out the path towards your vision that you say you want. Mm -hmm. And so she was like, oh, right. I'm trying to do this and she's trying to do this. Right. So would the same strategy that she's implementing be relevant to you? Oh, right. No. Right. So I could tell you the answer. Mm -hmm. Like, no, don't do that. Do this. I also hope that we are learning to be the CEO of our businesses. We're Mm -hmm. learning to be the business owner. We're learning to be our own strategist. So that's what I'm always looking at is, okay, well, she's doing that because in her vision, her ultimate goals are X, Y, and Z. Your vision, your goals are A, B, C. So therefore, different strategy. We need to implement different things for you. Mm -hmm. This is what we're doing all the time. Thank you, Instagram. Thank you, TikTok. (laughs) Other people are doing and going, oh, she looks like she's really killing it over there doing more TikTok videos or doing short reels. So maybe I have to start doing five second reels, right? This is what we're doing all the time. It's what we're being sold. It's what we're being told to do. It's what marketers and business coaches are selling us. Mm -hmm. And so that's where the breakdown happens is that we're seeing stuff and going, oh, maybe I should do that. That's what we mean by when, when we say shiny object syndrome, that's what we mean, right? It's like, does it look like the grass is greener over there because she's having a ball in her reels or whatever the thing is, right? Right. And so that's my ultimate goal is that you can start to look at things and go, oh, that's amazing that she's doing that. Good for her because it's in line with what she's trying to create. I'm going to do this over here because my vision is totally different than hers. And I feel really good and really confident about my road and my journey and my steps and the things I'm doing to grow my business. I'm not looking on somebody else's lawn and going, (laughs) maybe I should plant daffodils too. (laughs) You know, and that's, I think, the thing that social media has not helped us. No, not at all. Kind of, we're really comparing all the time and we're unsure about what to do. What's the right next thing? Where should I focus? What's the right strategy for me? Because I'm constantly being pulled into the directions of what other people are doing, right? Yeah. We're pulled in those directions and we're also looking to coaches to say, yes, do this. No, don't do that. I tell you constantly, there's frequent conversations that I have with friends where they're like, oh, this coach said this, this coach said that. Even this morning, I was on Instagram having a conversation in the DMs with someone who wants to write case studies. And she's like, oh, such and such freelance writing coach said blah, 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 that I should call them this. And I'm like, 
what does that feel like to you? Even just being in your world, I don't necessarily call myself a coach, but even being in your world, I'm like, I don't want to say yes or no. I want you to think that through. Is SEO a priority to you? Is findability a priority to you? Do these things matter to you? And I think that we're so unused to being asked those questions. We're so unused to saying, this is the vision I have. This is where I want to go. These are the exits I'm going to take that I guess it's probably a bit easier to just look and see what someone else is doing and go, oh, I like that. Let me try that. Oh, that looks fun. Let me try that. Oh, I don't want to make a decision. Let me just go ask a coach and get a yes or no from them. So one could say that the work that we do with you is a little bit more challenging because it actually pulls us to the mat and holds us accountable for things. But guess what? The reward and the payoff is so much greater. And this feeling of pride and empowerment and confidence that you have, it exists where it probably, I would imagine, doesn't really exist with working with other coaches. So that's been really fun to experience by working with you. I'm curious, like, I know that you have the Gab Accelerator. It then goes into like Gab Academy and Gab CEO, which we can talk about. But like, what was it that happened maybe or what thought sparked in your brain where you were like, I need to create this Gab Accelerator? Hey, fellow podcaster, I see you out here wanting to do more with SEO, but not even knowing where to begin or what to do. Oh, and yeah, there are loads of episodes you know you should be blogging about, but like, how? I saw so many conversations just like this happening around me, and one day I just thought, you know, I'm a podcaster, I'm an SEO show notes writer, I should make a resource. So I did. And now you can grab the SEO podcast show note and blog post templates. You get everything you need to go from podcast idea to SEO optimized podcast show note to SEOified blog post, which means you've got two long form content pieces out here marketing for you 24 7. I even included video training so you know exactly what goes where and how to incorporate SEO for your podcast ASAP. Click the link in the show notes and grab your templates today. Oh, like, why did I turn it into this condensed accelerator? Well, that, but also even like the first iteration of it, like what made you go, I'm recognizing blank and this is what they probably need. Yeah, because I used to work solely with one-on-one clients and um, high six-figure earners really getting into seven figures. And that was my business model was one-on-one. And you can only take on so many people at a time when you do the kind of work (laughs) that I do. But what I was noticing time and time and time again was I would get this client who's at high six figures and they would come to me going, okay, I need you to systematize, clean it up. They would tell me basically, we we need this and this and this. and I, I need you to do this, this and this. Right. And I'd be like, okay, okay, cool, cool. But my superpower is actually diagnostics. I think that's my super, super, super skill. Mm-hmm. So I'd always be like, okay, cool, cool. I hear you. I hear you. Let me just do my audit because like, that's how I ensure that we actually need these big things fixed and this big thing built out. And, and a lot of times those things that they thought they needed were because they heard it from somebody talking about it online or because we just believe we are at a certain place and we believe we need the next thing and the next thing and the next thing. Whatever the reason, every single time the big breakthrough was always like, oh, actually it wasn't that big thing you thought it was that we needed to fix or build or repair or whatever. It was always something that I was like, well, you have a gap down here in your foundations that you've just kind of been ignoring or you skipped over or you were too busy or you just didn't know. All are totally fine and relevant. You're not a bad person. You're not a bad business owner. But we just actually need to go fix this one thing down here at the bottom. There was just a little gap. And when we fix that, suddenly it'd be like, oh my God, my revenue skyrocket again. Um, But it was never these things up at the top of the pyramid, Mm -hmm. right? So like what I always say is like, if I gave you building blocks and you're going to build a pyramid, how would you do it? And you would say, well, that's a stupid question, Sally. What do you mean? I don't, what do you, I'm like, I give you blocks. I give you blocks. I hand them to you and I say, build me a pyramid. How do you do it? You're like, well, I just build a base at the bottom. And I'm like, yeah, exactly. (laughs) You build a strong, solid base at the bottom. So whatever crazy shape the pyramid takes, it can hold it. But when we build our businesses, we're actually doing the fun, shiny stuff at the top. And we think the answers happen there. And we think the growth happens there. And we're being told and sold all this fancy, shiny object stuff to do at the top. 
But every single time I worked with one of these private high achievers, high overworkers, high six figures or seven figure businesses, it's always came down to pricing strategy, profitability, really product market fit work, basic sales, pipeline, basic marketing. It was always down there at the foundations that when we tweaked that and fixed that, the business started skyrocketing again. So I had this day where I was like, gosh, wouldn't it be awesome if I could just fix that for everyone in a one and done kind of way? So then when they come to me for like, okay, I want you to do the next thing or build the next thing or fix this bigger problem, it's actually the problem. Wouldn't it be awesome if I could just like fix everyone's foundations for them? And I know that you all think that's not what you need. And I know you think your problem is somewhere else, but I bet you my house and it's a gorgeous house (laughs) that you have something foundationally that you've skipped over, haven't built, have ignored don't think you need, don't think is relevant to you. Mm -hmm. Um, So that's how I created that program. I actually drew a pyramid on a piece of paper. I've coached hundreds of people. I've built 15 seven-figure businesses. I've been a founder. I've been a COO. In my ideal world, I was like, what I would love is for those clients who come to me and say, I need you to fix this funnel or build this new funnel or whatever. What I would love in an ideal world is they actually have these pieces in place. And so I asked myself, What are those pieces? What are those non-negotiables? What are those pieces that everyone needs, no one can skip? What is it that every business needs? And it's to have a clear vision so that we actually know what bus we're driving and where we're driving the bus. (laughs) Everyone skips that. Yeah. That we have strong product market fit, right? So we actually understand our product, who it's for and why they want it and how to speak to it and how to sell it to them. That we have a pricing strategy in place that makes sense and an offer strategy in place that's actually scalable. We have to have some basic understanding of numbers. I don't go into all the things I know about numbers and cash flow, but we have to have a relationship with our numbers. And we have to have a basic, the one marketing channel that hits it. If you look at every business coach and every successful business owner, they will always say, oh yeah, we built a multi-million dollar business on that one funnel though. All the other stuff you see, but like our real money comes from that one funnel or that one Mm -hmm. marketing channel, one product. If you really start to pay attention to what they're saying, they're saying the same thing. So I'm like, how about we just make sure we build that? And then like the metrics, how are we measuring all of that? So to make sure that we're doing all that. So like, that's what I built. The Grown Ass Business Accelerator makes you a grown-ass business owner. Mm -hmm. That's why I call them gabbers. Mm -hmm. In my dream world, everybody just has these things in place. And when you have these things in place, then you can come back to me and go, all right, my mindset's getting in the way and let's address that. Mm -hmm. Or all right, I need your next level system or I need you to help me build this or I need to become a LinkedIn expert. Point me to the person who's going to make me. That's my one channel. That's my one thing. That's the one thing I want to do. You can't write a book. You can't start a podcast. You can't start a YouTube. You can't speak on stages. You can't be a LinkedIn expert. If you don't have those foundational pieces in place, none of those things are going to bring you leads. And if they bring you leads, you're going to have trouble converting them. Mm -hmm. So that's why I built it. And I think I'm probably not that great at selling it because it's like kind of the unsexy work (laughs) um, of like building the foundation of the pyramid. That sounds so fun. But it is really fun when I see people kind of go, oh. Yeah. (laughs) Everyone has these moments where they're like, oh. Yeah, it's the best. Oh, have to do that? Oh, are you serious? Mm -hmm. You mean like if I just do this and I just do that and I could just, oh, really? I think that moment for me was when I was doing the projections for the year. Well, actually, you know what? It was probably in Q4. We got on a call and there was a group of us and you were like, okay, let's play in Q4. And I was like, okay, I'm going to aim for this many people, this many sales, this much money. And I hit it fast and I boxered you and I was like, so your, your thing works. <laughs> and then I remember I was like, allow me. And I sent some like stupid gift that was like, duh. But realizing that and realizing that it sounds so stupid, but like realizing that business can be easy if you have all these foundations in place and I don't have to feel like a chicken running around with my head cut off and I don't have to feel like I'm spinning, which is something that comes up a lot in your world. 
and I know my next steps. And even though I might see a shiny object and look at it, I'm not going to necessarily reach for all of them. That for me, knowing that it can be easy, knowing that I can have a plan, knowing that I can work the freaking plan and that the plan will actually come to pass was like a jaw drop, mic drop moment for me. And it shouldn't be, but it is. Yeah. It's it's funny how it's like kind of everyone has their jaw drop moment. We're like, wait, what? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, kidding. I know, right? I know. It's actually easier than you're making it. Look, the truth is entrepreneurship is hard by nature. You're going off the tracks. You're doing your own thing. You're going on this uncharted road, right? You're going against the grain. You're going to deal with all of your family and friends going, are you still trying that little business of yours? Yeah. Right? Like, it is hard. You don't have suddenly a room of colleagues to hang out at the water cooler with and chat and commiserate with. In nature, you are doing something that's different to the regular journey we're taught from preschool that we're supposed to go on. Mm -hmm. It's hard in nature in that way. And it takes a particular type of person to go off the track and do their own thing. Also, if you're trying to build a seven-figure business or a multi-seven-figure business, I'm the first to admit, that's hard. (laughs) It has its layers of complexity. It gets more complex. The more people you hire, the more complex it gets because why? People are complex. (laughs) No. (laughs) Because business in itself, the business is still simple and easy and the structure is still simple. It's just the more people you add to it, the more complex it gets. But the truth is, if you're also like, I want a 300K a year business, that doesn't have to be hard. Mm -hmm. I want a 500K a year business every year. We can do that, dog. Like, that can be easy. Don't make that hard. Don't make that hard. It doesn't have to be hard. If you really have a solid business model in place and you know what you're doing, that can actually be easy. The reason we make it hard is because we're trying to do a bunch of things we don't need. We're over our skis a lot. We are (laughs) always trying to do these things we actually don't need and that are irrelevant to us, but we're being told by all these amazing marketers that we need to do them. So we're trying to do more than we can do and more than we can handle. And we're doing all these things early on that are for seven-figure businesses. So yeah, you're just doing all these things that you're not ready for, you don't have the skills for, you don't have the internal nervous system resiliency for. So yes, you're making it hard. But a 250K a year business, 300K, 500K, that can actually be really easy. I love hearing that. Doesn't mean it's not going to take work. Right. No work. And it's not going to be hard work at times. Nope. Didn't say that. (laughs) But we're making it harder than it needs to be a lot of times. For sure. Okay. So for anyone listening, if they're like, I need to get in the Gab Accelerator the next round, do you know those dates? Can you tell us? I do, darling, because I have a year plan ahead of me. I knew that. (laughs) I do them as VIP days for people. And that usually is a journey of six weeks privately or the next group rounds are April 10th because I was just asked this morning and then June 11th or 12th are the next two. Amazing. I'll make sure we have that link below. And then I'm going to also link your quiz that you have where if I'm explaining it correctly, you take the quiz and it kind of is like the more high level, simpler version of what we get inside your program, like moving into Gab CEO. I'm going to have to have you back so we can talk more about like how everything is laid out and what the different levels and tiers look like. Plus, by then I will have experienced a little bit more of it. But that quiz does help point out different gaps, right? Like where you're at and... Yeah, my intention with that quiz was just to give people a view into like, you might think you need to do the next marketing thing or do more social media or do more of whatever you saw pop up on your Instagram feed, but actually just take a 12 question quiz and it's going to tell you what are some of your possible gaps and areas that you need a little bit of more of your love and attention. Yeah, perfect. So I'll make sure those two things are below. And then where can people find you? Where are you hanging out online? I hang out at Sally Grows Business on the Instagrams, <laughs> possibly the TikToks someday soon, and <laughs> LinkedIn. But LinkedIn. Instagram, I'm starting to do this thing where I'd never have time to write a newsletter. So I'm just starting to make my newsletter video. So you'll see more videos of me on places. But Instagram's probably an easy place to find me. I love that. Make sure you get on her newsletter because it's so fun, especially when you really like get into something like reading your emails just make me so happy because I'm like, yeah, (laughs) 
I always have to read them first thing in the morning so that I get like pumped up and that goes into my day. Oh my God. I love hearing that. Thank you. Yes. I always try to at least tell a story that then you're like, okay, I got this. Yeah, for sure. Thank you so much for being here. I'm not kidding. I'll have to have you come back on. Yeah, we should talk about what the actual business audit and the level two journey looks like and why it's super cool and fun. So yeah, yeah. let's do it. We're going to do it. We're doing it. I feel right. like I talked a lot today. I'm having an inspirational day, so I'm sorry that I... No, don't apologize. Nope, you're not allowed to apologize for that. Nope, nope, <laughs> nope, nope. I'm just going to talk over you. <laughs> All right. Thank you for listening and being here, and I'll see you next time, whenever that is. That was really something, wasn't it? Let that really sink in and guide you toward being the answer to even more Googled questions. Thanks so much for joining me this episode. You are the reason this show exists and that it keeps growing. You know, thanks to all those follows and reviews. <clears throat> if you know someone who could benefit from what was shared, send it to them. We don't do shy around here. If you thought of clarifying or follow-up questions while listening, you know what to do. Say hi on Instagram. Check the show notes for all the things that were mentioned, and I'll talk to you soon, friend. I get it. You want to celebrate your clients, lift up the work they're doing, and use your student successes in a meaningful way. And you know case studies allow you to do that. But first, you have to figure out who to feature, and then you have to get quotes from them. Don't let the boogeyman bite you in the tush just yet because you don't got to figure this out on your own. That's the exact reason I created the Who and How to Interview for a Case Study mini training. Over four days, you get resources to help you figure out who to feature, approach that person for an interview, structure your interview, and know the exact questions to ask during the interview. The link is below and we start on March 24th.